please join me and give a warm welcome to our first speaker and fellow UNICEF supporter, Lori Hernandez. When I was five years old, I remember sitting at home and watching gymnastics on TV. It just so happened to play. And I remember seeing these two beautiful, but very different gymnasts out there. One was graceful and kind of calm and slow, and one was powerful and strong and bold. And I remember thinking, man, they're so different, but they're both so beautiful. Hey, mom, I want to be just like them someday. And I pointed to the screen, and she goes, OK. <laughs> and she put me in. Instead of going to the TOPS camp, where you kind of have fun, and you meet all the friends, and then once the camp is over, you come back home. The camp that I got invited to was a bit different. It was a national team training camp, and that's where they trained all the Olympians. But the thing is, it was done at the same time as my TOPS camp. So I had a choice, a little fork in the road at nine years old, to decide, OK, do I want to go and have fun with my friends and enjoy some time with them? Or do I want to go this route and become a serious competitive gymnast and maybe train for the Olympics? And my thought was immediate. I wanted to go to the Olympics. And so at nine years old, that's when that realization hit me that that would, was going to be a goal of mine. My parents looked at me and said, immediately, OK, how can we help you get there? And because of my parents' perspective of my dreams and all the different obstacles that I would end up having to overcome in the future, it helped me to think outside of the box as well. So now at 11 years old, I finally make elite. I make elite nationals. I'm expecting <laughs> this competition to go well because I'm 11. And you know, you're just starting to learn how to work hard in gymnastics. And that's when the sport gets a little tough. But I figured I would just go out and have fun. And the meet would work out. And I would come out in a good place. Psych. I went to that meet and fell five times. I remember feeling so disappointed at this competition. I'm pretty sure I was crying, but that's OK. And I remember my mom pulling me to the side and saying, hey, you have every right to feel frustrated. You have a right to be discouraged. And it's OK that you feel kind of down right now. But I need you to take a step back and realize the fact that there are so many little girls who want to be competing right where you are right now. And you need to embrace that, and you need to be grateful for that. So now at 13 years old in 2013, I make elite nationals again. And this time, I realize, you know what? I can't take it for granted. I want to work hard. I want to have good results for this competition. I'm going to do the best that I can. 2014, in January, I was doing a skill on the balance beam, and I ended up slipping and fracturing the growth plate in my right wrist. Ouch. <laughs> I was out for a couple months, and I was trying to look at the positive and think about, OK, right now my body needs a little bit of a break. But I still have enough time to come back for meat season. So I'll stay in shape, and I'll keep moving. And sure enough, I started to come back. But then in June of 2014, I ended up doing vault and dislocating my knee and having to get surgery because I tore my tendon. And I just remember feeling this sense of fear and panic. But some part of me wanted to crawl back and, and be this confident underdog and think, imagine if I take this year off and come back stronger than ever next year. And I remember my parents sitting me down while I have this really bulky knee brace on just saying, hey, you know, if you want to quit gymnastics, we understand. And if you want to do a lower level of gymnastics, we understand that too. But we want you to know that we have full faith in you, and we think that you do have enough time to come back for the Olympics. And so 14-year-old me said, OK, not realizing that there was a lot of resilience in that word. 2015 came along. I worked extremely hard. I qualified to elite nationals, and I ended up coming out first. So in March of 2016, I ended up actually straining my VMO, which is the muscle that's on the inside of your leg. It connects to your knee. And because of that strain, I wasn't able to tumble. And I remember feeling stressed, nervous, anxious, to the point where in March of 2016, a couple months before the Olympics, I almost quit. But I remember telling my family, I can't do it. This is too much. And my dad <laughs> told me, Look, you've been doing gymnastics for 11 years. You, you can't quit now. Whether you think it's going to work, whether you don't think it's going to work, you have to stick with it and allow gymnastics to take its course. You can do it. You're going to be just fine. And so I chose to stuck, stick with it. So I end up getting to the Olympics. We win gold as a team. I'm able to qualify into individual balance beam and win a silver medal in that division. From then on, I went into Dancing with the Stars and won with my partner, Val. Go, Val! <laughs> and I was able to go on tour with the dancers. I came out with a book called I Got This Till Gold and Beyond that became a New York Times bestseller. I was raised by incredible parents 
who love each other dearly and seeing their love every day when I was a little kid was such a privilege, but UNICEF is doing their best to make sure that that's not a privilege for, privilege for kids, it's a standard. That they have people who care about them and who enforce the fact that having a childhood is extremely important. And I can embrace the fact that I had such an incredible childhood and now it's my job to be on a platform and tell others we need to give these kids a childhood as well. I remember first starting off, uh, you know, being a young teen and seeing, I believe it was the, the TAP project, where you go on your phone and you allow the, dr the time to tick, and as long as you don't touch your phone, UNICEF donates water. And this was before the Olympics, and I remember wanting to be a part of such a large organization and thinking, if I could just do this one little thing, maybe I can give a little bit. And now because of the Olympics, I have a platform to be a part of UNICEF, and this is my second event with them, being able to speak with all of you, and it is an absolute honor to be here, and I hope I get to do all of this in the future. So thank you. Keep on supporting UNICEF. Let's keep spreading on the wor word to make sure that children need childhoods, and we get to be a part of that. Thank you. <laughs>